construction of vector super keys. And we vector super keys in what we call the best domain of A. When we put some of the components of the vector field zero by integrating. And what was the vector super field in A? The first term was theta sigma mu bar plus a theta square term times theta bar lambda bar plus a theta bar square term times theta lambda plus theta square a bar square term on x, 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 and that will be normalized by half time. And we notice that mass dimension. It is a mass dimension of this object is 1 and this object is one. Half 1 is a particular number of half. This is 3 by 2. Now we together have minus 3 by 2. And we have the mass dimension of this object and this is mass dimension. And we also registered that in the Vesumino gauge fixed version, there is no both for these values. We did at some scale by doing pairs rearrangement of these objects. We can rewrite it as 1 by 2 theta 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 bar theta bar times an theta mu. If I write exponential EV, this is the top end for the expansion 1 plus half e plus 1 plus e 
of v square 1 by 3 factorial v cube this series this series okay because v cube onwards turns are 0 This is a useful expression. We'll keep it aside. We may use it. We'll use it later. And now we put back what v is here: theta sigma mu, theta bar a mu plus theta square, theta bar lambda bar plus theta bar square, theta lambda plus half theta square, theta bar square d plus half. So, this superfeed exponential of V e is also a real superfeed, it is V is a superfeed, it would have an expansion in terms of its components like this. Now, keep this aside, we will get back to using this property sometime. But now, in order to write Lagrangian density or action for objects containing the vector field A mu, normally you write them in terms of field strength. So, field strength is F mu mu. anti symmetrized derivative of A mu. So, we have to find a supersymmetric generalization of field strength. So, supersymmetric field strength Superfeed. Uh, superfeed. That's what we want to construct. To do this, we'll construct first a chiral superfield and call it W alpha, and an anti-chiral superfield. and call it w bar alpha dot, where w alpha is 1 fourth minus 1 fourth d bar d bar d alpha v and w bar alpha dot is minus 1 fourth d d d bar alpha This is just a construction. Well, this symbol is the shorthand part. And this symbol here is the shorthand for d alpha up, d alpha down. The covariant derivative, d is and d bar. Now, this construction is a chiral superfeed that is very easy to see. So, properties of this W alpha and W bar alpha dot are indeed chiral and anti chiral superfeeds. What do we mean by chiral superfield? Is that definition of a chiral superfield is that barred covariant derivative acting on that to be 0. So, let us evaluate that. Sir? 
Is one by four, one by four? This is oh, this is one by four. Okay. So uh, multiply. I mean, take a covariant derivative of W beta. Let's take that. And what's that? One fourth W bar dot because there's a left chiral piece. So so D bar alpha dot on W beta is D alpha bar D bar D bar D beta B. D objects are spinorial objects. Product of three D bars is identically zero. The same way product of three three theta is identically zero. So this object is identically zero. And therefore, this is zero. So let me write it this in long hand. What do we mean by this? Let me put now components. One dot, one dot, two dot, two dot. Now, B bar one dot up through an epsilon, I can bring it down. This index that will become two dot with a minus. Two dot I can bring it down and make it one, one dot without change of sign. One of them will change sign, other will not change sign. These two, these objects, anti commute. So they are equal, so twice this number, twice this object, because they anti commute, so I can make this into this with a, with a change of sign. Now for every value, take alpha to be one dot, it is one dot d one dot and d one dot square, that is identically zero. Take it to be two dot, take it across here with a change of sign, that it becomes d bar. 2 dot square. So that is 0. So this object is identically 0. So therefore, W alpha is indeed a current superfield. Similarly, apply D alpha on W bar beta dot. That is also zero for the same reason because this is identically zero. Zero value it will have on a function with this three theta bars, three theta bars, and that's also zero. All right. So we so which means W alpha is a function of only y and theta, and W bar is a function of y bar and theta bar. So that's one property. Second property is that mass dimension of W alpha and W bar alpha dot 
is 3 by 2. That is simple because that each derivative is mass dimension, covalent derivative is mass dimension plus half. V is mass uh, uh, dimension 0, so 1 plus half, 1 half, 1 half is 3. Not only that, W alpha and W bar alpha are gauge invariant now let's check that w alpha under gauge transformation how would it transform w alpha is minus 1 fourth d bar d bar of d alpha v and v transforms under gauge transformation i times lambda minus lambda dagger. That is how we had set up the gauge transformation of a vector supon field in terms of a transformation parameter super field lambda and lambda dagger where Lambda is a chiral superfield. So, d bar derivative on lambda is 0 and d derivative on lambda dagger is 0. This lambda dagger is an anti chiral superfield. So, that tells me is that this object obtained okay, on this is 0. So, this is equal to minus i by 4 plus 1 by 4 d dagger d dagger d r v minus i by 4 d bar d bar d alpha lambda. This object is W alpha, so I will write it as W alpha i by 4 Now, look at this object I can write this as an anti commutator acting on lambda because the additional piece that I have added is d bar it is a d alpha times d bar on the right, but d bar on lambda is 0. So, I have not done anything wrong. <coughs> now, recall what is d bar beta dot d bar alpha anti commutator. This is what it is from the algebra of the D, which means this anti commutator is essentially a space derivative, and space derivative commutes with this covariant derivative. So, then I can rewrite this now as. Because this object in co commutes with but then D bar acting on lambda zero, it is lambda the current super field.
Similarly, W alpha bar dot goes to under gauge transformation W bar alpha bar. They have another nice property. If I hit a core end derivative d alpha on w alpha, that is the same as d bar core end derivative alpha dot acting on w bar alpha dot. Now look at W alpha the way it was divided, defined. It has two barred covariant derivatives and one unbarred. Definition of W alpha. By hitting one more, D alpha, we have two unbarred derivatives and two barred covariant derivatives acting on W alpha on the left hand side. It told us that the D theta essentially pick up the coefficients of theta. So, such on the left hand side, what we will pick up is essentially the term with four theta terms, two theta and two theta bar, and two d derivatives will kill the theta, d bar derivatives will kill theta bar. So, we will be left from b term d, right. Same would be true on the right hand side. So, it is essentially that the last component of the super field V survives from left hand side and from right hand side. Now, this relation is conjugate of this. All it tells us is that D component of the V super field is real. But that's what it is. It is rare. Is that clear? This property is a restatement of the fact that the D component of superfield B is real. So now with these properties, now let us make the next step in constructing our field trunk super field. We have this super field V of x and theta bar, the vector super field. And we had defined to define chiral super fields a new coordinate y mu, which was x mu plus pi theta sigma mu theta bar. And for anti chiral super fields, we defined a y bar, which was x mu minus i theta sigma mu theta bar. So, let me write this vector super field in these change coordinates. So, which means I can write this vector field as y minus i theta sigma theta bar theta theta bar because that is what x is in terms of y. Or I could also write it as V of y bar plus i theta sigma mu theta bar theta theta bar.
Let me make a Taylor expansion here. Expand this around y. This is the next term. There is no more term because of what v was. We had the lowest term which had two thetas, one theta and one theta bar. That's it. Any other expansion will have square of this times v that would be zero. Next term. So this field expansion is this much only. Or I could expand that way. I'm writing this y and y bar here explicitly to remind us that these are derivatives with respect to y and y bar. Now let me expand it into components, what this object is. This object was theta sigma mu theta bar of a mu y, now instead of x y, which is the function of y, plus theta square theta bar lambda bar y, plus theta bar square theta lambda y, plus half theta square theta bar square d of y. So that is this term. Now what about this term? This term is going to be minus i theta sigma mu theta bar times theta sigma nu theta bar of d mu a nu y. The first term of v is this much and that is all cont will contribute because other terms will have too many thetas, more than two thetas or more than two theta bar. And this again you use the identity that this object is half theta square theta bar square theta mu nu. Now I have right signs, everything is right. So half is taken out. So it's minus i d mu y a mu y. I could do the same exercise now with this expression and the answer would be complex conjugate of what I have.
I have just rubbed off the definition of W alpha. But in order to evaluate W alpha, what I need to evaluate is here is a co D covariant derivative acting on B. Now I have used the covariant derivative in Y basis. Because now I can use this expression of V, which is being written as a function of Y. Or I could use covariant derivative with respect to Y bar if I was using this expression. So I am going to use this expression. Now let me remind you what the covariant derivative is in Y basis. derivative d alpha in y basis was d alpha plus twice i sigma mu theta bar alpha d mu y and just for later reference let me write d bar alpha also in y basis is minus d bar alpha dot minus 2i theta sigma mu alpha dot e mu y bar. So, let me operate this. Now d alpha, spinner derivative d alpha, this d alpha, when it hits this object here, it will pick up this term, which is this one theta here, it will hit this theta. So, first term is sigma mu theta times a mu bar alpha. That is from this piece. From this piece, it will hit theta square that will give me a factor of 2, theta alpha, theta bar, lambda y, this is y bar. Then this will hit this, that will give me theta bar square and kill this 1 theta in that. So, the first term will be lambda y then here will give me theta alpha theta bar square d of y theta bar square I have taken out. So, d of 1. Hitting this one and there is this piece. That piece I will not write because it, will can, it cancels away with some other equation. So, I will not write some other next term that we can play. Alright, you can skip that step. Remember, there was this piece here also, but that should cancel away. Next now, let me uh, apply this part to the various terms in V. Have I done that somewhere? So, let me do it here on the side. What do I have? Theta sigma mu theta bar is from 
first term a mu and on that I act twice I sigma nu theta bar alpha d nu y on a mu y. That is the term when this object hits that one. Reorganize this and convince yourself that is i times but i will also go away. And this is simply minus theta bar theta bar, there are two theta bars times sigma mu nu plus i theta mu nu uh, alpha beta theta beta d nu y a mu y. Reorganize this by pairs uh, rearrangement, you will get a sigma mu times a sigma nu bar here. Right? Sigma mu sigma nu bar as sigma mu nu minus i theta mu nu. There is this i here which will go here. Now, this object is minus theta bar theta bar sigma mu nu sigma mu nu uh, times uh, 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 sigma mu nu theta alpha times f mu nu y, except that this is a different order from this one, so that will change sign. minus i theta bar theta bar theta alpha d mu y a mu y and there is a factor of is that factor all right should I mean a factor of half somewhere or no yes now, uh, I do not know if the signs are right. Sign should have been plus. Uh, let me see, why is it? This should have been plus answer here. Anyway, do this carefully. So, you will you'll get an answer like this. And this is the term that we did not write here when I said there is a term in this point. This will cancel that term. So, it must have an opposite sign of this term. So, let me write that now. Plus half sigma mu nu theta alpha f mu nu of y. There is one more term. Now, this object can take this that is 1 theta bar, this is 2 theta. So, that will also give me uh, no, uh, so mm, slow, slow. Okay. Uh, the next term. Yes, yes. Uh, now look at this term. Yes, this term. This object hitting that term. That will give me a derivative over lambda bar. And do the phase rearrangement, and you should see an answer i theta square sigma mu d mu y lambda bar y.
and there are more no more because uh, if that hits uh, this object that will have c theta bar this derivative hitting, hitting this will have c theta bar this will also have c theta bar here so they are obvious we could do a similar exercise with d bar y bar acting on v and I'll just simply write the answer is epsilon alpha dot beta dot sigma bar mu theta beta dot k mu y bar plus twice theta alpha bar bar alpha dot theta lambda y bar plus theta square lambda bar alpha dot y bar plus theta bar alpha dot dy bar minus half epsilon alpha dot beta dot sigma mu nu bar theta bar beta dot f nu nu y bar minus i theta bar square epsilon dot beta dot sigma bar mu d mu y bar lambda Now we have started seeing f minu appearing in a super field. So we are on our way to construct the field transport field because now f minu has appeared here as some component of this super field. But uh, this is not a chiral super field. But we constructed w alphas from there by hitting two more deep covariant derivatives on these objects. They were chiral super fields. So let's see what W alpha now looks like. W alpha was minus one fourth d bar d bar and now d bar y d bar y basis d alpha v y basis. So for that this is a function of only y because it's a chiral supermatch it should be a function of only y. So we calculate everything in y basis. So use the first expression here and apply 2 d bar on it. Now again recall what is d bar alpha dot in y basis. From your notes you will check it is minus or plus I do not remember now minus minus I think. minus simply the spinner and derivative. and d bar alpha up y is d bar alpha so d bar alpha dot y d bar alpha dot y is simply minus d alpha bar d bar alpha that's minus d bar d bar So when I apply now that these two d bar covariant derivatives on this, covariant derivatives act as only as square of the spinner derivatives or ordinary spinner derivatives. So it will pick up the term which is 2 theta bar and that is it. It will not pick up anything else because hitting on this it will be sorry, hitting on this it will be 0, hitting on this it will be 0. Only one is two theta bars are here, 
and this is again an exercise I think we have set it up, up earlier d bar d bar acting on theta bar theta bar is 4. This is an exercise we did at some stage. So which means all I do is that that th 4 goes away with this 4 and since there is a minus here, so I have this minus, so minus one 4, this minus also goes away and I pick up what is in the 2 thick bar term here, lambda alpha y plus theta alpha d alpha y and uh, dy plus half sigma mu mu theta alpha s mu mu plus minus i theta square sigma mu 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 y of lambda bar y. Now we have constructed W alpha with its component field. It's a chiral super field. First component is lambda alpha. Component containing one theta is dy plus this piece because there are two the two pieces and component containing theta bar theta uh, theta, theta two theta square is this. So that's what a chiral super field is supposed to be made up of. I have theta less term, single theta term and theta square term. Now, and it has a field strength sitting in it. So, this is our field strength super field. Similarly, I can construct now W bar alpha dot. I will just give you the answer. Uh, alpha dot that would be a function of y bar and theta this is a function of y and theta is minus half minus 4 d uh, y bar d y bar d alpha dot y acting on b bar bar and that object is lambda bar alpha dot function of y bar plus theta bar alpha d y of y bar minus half epsilon alpha beta dot sigma mu nu bar theta bar beta bar f menu function of y bar minus i theta bar square epsilon dot beta dot sigma bar mu beta dot alpha d mu y bar on lambda y bar. Now these are our W alpha and W bar alpha are our field strength super fields. There are two of them, parallel and its complex conjugate, anti -pyre. And it contains a fermionic field. Now, uh, mass dimension of W was 3 half. So is lambda, the fermion. The lowest component of, of this chiral super field is minus 3 half. Second component is 
then mass dimension 2 this and also s mu mass dimension 2 third component is minus 2 plus uh, half Now, if I have to write the Lagrangian, what I have to do is that I have to construct that Lagrangian has to be real and has to contain an f square piece. So, all I have to do is if I take w alpha, w alpha, that would have an f square piece, but that is not real and add to that w bar alpha bar dot w bar alpha dot that will make it real. But I have to construct Lagrangian in terms of objects which transform as total derivatives under super smooth transformation. So, this is the product of two cardinal superfields. What do I do? I take the f term. And I take the f term that will give me a Lagrangian containing f square term. Now, let us construct what is the w square f term of w square. we need to construct w alpha and w alpha and we need to construct only the f term which means we need to construct term containing theta square and theta bar square but so theta square right is a uh, current superfeed now this is an example w alpha multiplied by another w alpha and pick up theta square term. There will be one term here which is square of this right away. Then there is this term which is already theta square. So, product of this term with a theta less term is going to be another term. So, let me keep i's and 2's correctly. Then I square this, that is 2 theta terms, and that gives me, now I will do that in a corner to show you how this calculation is done. square of this object is one fourth epsilon alpha beta sigma mu nu theta beta sigma lambda rho theta alpha f mu nu f lambda rho that is what that square of that term is this term. Yes. Uh, one up or one down, right? That is the epsilon. So, epsilon beta this. 
Now write this as the following. 1 by 4, epsilon alpha beta, sigma mu nu, beta gamma, theta gamma, sigma uh, lambda rho, alpha delta, 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 f mu nu, f lambda rho. Epsilon alpha beta, sigma mu nu, beta gamma. Now you have theta alpha gamma down times theta delta gamma. This you can write it as 1 by epsilon gamma delta theta theta bar. These two theta can be written like this. Now look at these objects. So this is 1 by 8. So forget about this half. Huh? Epsilon alpha beta sigma mu beta gamma gamma delta. And there is an identity we once wrote down is that when I take sigma mu nu and apply by 1 epsilon on this side and 1 epsilon at that time that gives me back sigma mu nu. With this label first and this label second and I have theta theta out sigma lambda mu alpha delta f mu mu f lambda rho I think do I have signs right I think mean one sign change should be there because of this only because this with two epsilon when you rewrite it's with a change of sign This times epsilon times this epsilon is this object with a change sign. That is minus theta theta eight trace of sigma mu nu sigma lambda rho. And again for traces I think I had given some identities at one stage. Trace of this object is delta mu nu delta nu lambda rho 2 plus 1 by i epsilon lambda rho mu nu f mu nu f lambda rho. trace of these two sigma twice this object and now anti-symmetrized this means because it is anti-symmetrized that gives me a factor of 2 this gives me a factor of 2 then I have minus theta square by 2 is that what the final answer is yes times f mu nu times f mu nu plus i by 2 i mu nu lambda rho f lambda rho. This object we'll call F star of mu nu. Sorry, um, no, something. Is, no, sorry, not this. Object. This object we'll call F star. So it is minus theta squared by two F mu nu F mu nu F mu nu F mu nu. plus f star f mean <coughs> nu f mean nu
सवाल वाद देता हूँ उनको सुन लो Now that looks fairly nice because that has an f square piece which is can be a action that has this piece which could be uh, can be which is the kinetic energy for a fermion is there anything something is huh you mean huh hey, huh this is uh, i think this is confusion the star is this was what uh, maybe i should call this here huh? it is possible yes sir same means No, they're not there. They're not there. There's no star. Only one of them. If there's star on both of them, then they're, they're the same. Okay. Now, if similarly, you could construct W bar alpha dot W bar alpha dot up, and pick up and write down only the F term. This is an anti-chiral superfield. The F term would be. Contain two theta bar, and this would be d square y bar to i lambda bar y bar sigma bar mu d mu y bar lambda y bar. This complex conjugate of that object, one half m f mu nu y bar f mu nu y bar. This will change sign and become plus half x star f mu nu y bar f mu nu y bar. This will be complex conjugate of what we have here. Complex conjugate of this will change this sign, but make this derivative come here with unbar lambda. Then you reorganize that using that identity and pick up that sign back again. And complex conjugate of f star is minus f star because there is i in the definition of f star. So let me write f star here to you again. F star mu nu is one by two i epsilon mu nu lambda rho f lambda rho. So the i setting here. So complex conjugate of x star is minus x star. Now I think we have everything that we need to write a supersymmetric u one gauge state. Now let me add them up. F term of W alpha W alpha plus Hermitian conjugate, which means adding these up and uh, divided by one by four. I get one half one and. Now this is a function of d of y. This is a function of y bar, right? Now after adding it up, I take theta equal to zero, theta bar equal to zero. 
that we convert both y and y bar into x. y will go into x and y bar will also go into x. So that's this. Next is the Fermi thesis. I by 2 lambda x sigma mu d mu lambda bar x minus i by 2 lambda bar x sigma bar mu d mu lambda x and minus 1 by 4 f mu mu x f mu mu x. So now supersymmetric action. Then for theta equal to zero, theta bar equal to zero. So this is a supersymmetric supersymmetric generalization of of pure Maxwell theory. Pure we means no matter. There are no charged particles. Maxwell's theory would be simply given by an x and one fourth of an f mu f mu. Now, in addition to that, so what we have? We have a theory of a photon. It is given by a mu and a fermionic partner, which is lambda. Give it a name, 14 ohm, which is charged chargeless, massless, measure on a fermion. And then we also have this object D sitting here. Whereas fermion and gauge fields have dynamics, because they have kinetic energy pieces. D has no dynamics. That means so we, we have been always promising that auxiliary fields D with dimension mass dimension 2 cannot have any dynamics. So it doesn't have any dynamics. And if I write very this action with respect to D, D is an auxiliary field. auxiliary field we mean with no dynamics and its constraint equation in this theory is simply is 
k equal to 0 because if I vary this object then that will be equal to 0. So, I can just drop it away. So, rest of it is my super smooth with maximum scale. Now we have learned how to do supersymmetric matrix ma ma maximal scaling. This one XR. We know this is a supersymmetric Lagrangian without having checked the supersymmetric invariance because the way we constructed it as the F term of a Carroll superfluid. But if you want to check it explicitly, then you would know how A mu transforms under supersymmetric transformation or F transforms under supersymmetric transformation, how lambda transforms under supersymmetric, how D transforms under supersymmetric. So that is an extra height. From the chiral superfield W alpha the function of y and theta implement meaning this Suzy transformation y mu under Suzy goes into y mu plus twice i theta sigma mu epsilon bar and theta goes as theta plus epsilon I will write this. Put that in it, and you have the W alpha expansion which is still there. Now we have W top as function of y and theta. Show that supersymmetric transformation of F mu nu is epsilon bar sigma mu d mu lambda anti symmetrized minus epsilon sigma mu this is bar d mu lambda bar d is i epsilon sigma bar dot d lambda plus epsilon sigma dot lambda bar sigma dot lambda is the shorthand for sigma mu d mu and sigma bar d is a short end hard sigma mu bar d mu and delta lambda alpha is one half sigma mu nu epsilon alpha f mu nu plus d this exercise we did it for chiral superfield not just the scalar chiral superfield now you do it for this chiral superfield W alpha and check this. These are the transformation laws, exactly the laws that we listed in the early lectures for the vector multiplet. And that time I promised you that I would not, I will derive them sometime. So, this is the way to derive Now next, this was pure maximal scale, you know, with no matter, no electrons in it, only gauge fields and their super smooth partners. How do I couple matter to it? 
मेटल सॉफ्ट So now let's think of a chiral superfield a set of chiral superfields L is 1, 2, 3, 4 whatever set which means function of y and theta only and contains the field components phi L psi L and F L. Its conjugate which is phi L dagger which will be a function of y bar and theta bar and we'll have com uh, components phi L star, phi L bar and F L star. Now if they carry the gate charge, the U1 charge, they must transform under U1 transformation. How do they transform? So we prescribe a transformation proper under U1 transformation. Now these are superfields, so they will transform by the superfield parameter lambda. So an exponential of minus i v is the gauge coupling, gauge coupling. T L is the charge that this phi L carries times lambda. Lambda is the transformation parameter superfield, chiral superfield. So the chiral superfield means V bar acting on lambda. The first thing is that that tells me phi L is a function, the chiral superfluid is a function of y and theta only. Lambda is the chiral superfluid, it is a function of y and theta. So, this whole thing is a function of y and theta. Therefore, this transformed object is also a chiral superfluid. It is a function of only y and theta. It means V bar derivative acting on this object is 0, if it is acting on, on this is 0. If this is a chiral superfluid, this is also a chiral superfluid. Now the conjugate one. Something is missing. There is a little uh, normalization. Here. I put it factor 2. Normally we do not put 2 here. That is the right normalization here. So, it is minus 2i V gauge coupling, T L is the charge of the phi field. If charge 1, so put plus 1. If charge minus 1, put minus 1. If it um, charge 1 third, put minus 1 third. Or with a quark chiral field carrying a quark, so 1 third, 2 thirds, whatever number you have, you put that. And the dagger under U1 transformation will go to dagger prime exponential plus 2i g t l lambda dagger i l dagger. Now, d alpha on lambda dagger is 0, lambda dagger is anti currency. So, by construction, gauge transformations on phi and phi dagger 
don't change their chiral nature. Pi change uh, transform pi L is still a chiral and pi dagger is, is anti chiral. Now, if I have to write a coupling interaction between charge chiral field and the vector field, because that gives me the charge field and the gauge field coupling, that is what coupling of matter to gauge uh, 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 electromagnetism is. So now look at this object. First thing is remind yourself V changes under gauge transformation of V plus I lambda minus lambda dagger. And for chiral superfields, when we wrote kinetic energy, okay, the Lagrangian, we took it, we took uh, pi dagger pi and took the x term of that. That's what gave us a kind of term in writing when we wrote the Langali. So we have several of them. Now this object is not gauging me right now. Because this changes by this phase factor, this changes by this phase factor. So in order to make this gauge in region, what do I do? Sorry, you are right. Who was that? Somebody is following. <laughs> yeah. So, minimal Normally, when you couple gauge fields, scalar fields, what do you do? Or fermion field, charge fermion field. You replace ordinary derivatives by covariant derivatives. We call that minimal substitution. So, what we are looking for is a generalization of the transfer of minimal substitution. I convert this object, which is not a chiral, this is a chiral superfluid, anti chiral superfluid, this is not a chiral superfluid, this is a vector superfluid, which is self conjugate. How do I generalize this so that it becomes gauge invariant? Now clearly, under gauge transformation G L, G T L, P under U1 transformation, if this is the law, transforms as minus 2 I G T L lambda dagger 2 G T L G. 2i g t a lambda. And phi l dag dagger transforms exactly by the uh, object with opposite phase sign for phase. So this is gauge in way. This would make it phi l dagger. So G T L P Now it's a self conjugate object. Because you think self conjugate this is a real super field. I think in my notes somewhere that some have people have already noted. I have put some places minus i here by mistake. Some places it should be no minus i because it has to be here. So phi. So this is a real superfield.
So what do I do to write an example? I just take the D term of this object. So Lagrangian density. 1 by 4 W alpha by W alpha was pure gauge. Take the F term and Hermitian conjugate and put theta equal to 0, theta bar equal to 0. That will make this whole thing a function of x. To that add phi L dagger exponential 2 G T L V phi L and take the D term of x. This by construction is by function of x. And some more L's, this is your set of fields. For every field you have this kind of a thing, so some are all else, so for every field you have this. Now in addition, we also learned you could add a super potential field. What? Here is the only kind of super field, we had a super potential piece also. So, super potential is now curly W, don't confuse this, which is a holomorphic function of phi L. Take the f term of that, Hermitian conjugate, put theta equal to 0, theta bar equal to 0, so that was the both general human gauge invariant Lagrangian I can construct with a set of charged matter chiral super fields that is phi L. There is one more term that I can add. Vector super field D term will also transform under super semi transformation and total derivation. So, I could also add simply Parameter eta, coupling eta, and V of D. Because that's by construction supersymmetric invariant. So, this is the most general Lagrangian we can construct. I wish to expand this in terms of components fields. And then A uh, vector So I could use, th this is of my definition of various fields. Now, if, let me write this now in component fields with the Lagrangian density.
the first part is W. This is straightforward. We wrote it earlier. What is it? So let me rewrite that. One by d squared i minus i lambda bar sigma bar dot sigma lambda minus one by four f mu v f mu v. That is double square root. Except that I wrote two lambda terms there with i half i by two. This and its summation conjugate. They are equal up to total derivative. So I just double up one and thrown away the total derivative. So that is W square. Then there is an eta v d. So that gives me this. That is this piece. Now this piece. If there was no this object here, we already know what that answer is. And that answer is, let me write down here. <coughs> ordinary derivative to phi L mod square <coughs> minus I psi L bar D uh, sigma bar D psi L plus F bar F L mod square. This is what it was. If there was nothing sitting in here, this object sitting in there here, if you do the calculations, what it does is it converts this into a covariant derivative, converts into a covariant derivative. Whereas d mu phi L is d mu phi L plus i. G T L uh, A mu phi L. Is that what? Yeah. This and D mu psi L is also same. So it just does this. But in addition to that, it also introduced some other terms, and I'm going to write those terms now. Minus root two g t l phi l star lambda psi l plus phi l lambda bar psi l bar plus g t l phi l star phi l star D. If you do expansion of those fields and pick up the D term, you also have additional pieces of this one. Well. Then we have F term of this object. F term of this object, we already learned how to calculate that. That is simply W L of phi which is W L remind us of phi is D by D phi L of the super potential phi L. Take the L com com one uh, derivative with respect to phi L, that object, times F L half psi L psi k W L k of phi and W L k of phi is the second derivative of the super potential plus permission conjugate. It's not a complicated exercise to see that this uh, this object gets converted to covariant derivative of this additional piece. Just to do a little bit of expansion of that object. If you have difficulties, tell me next time.
Uh, let me write it down for you, the answer. Pi L dagger exponential 2 G T L V of phi L theta 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 bar theta bar term of this is F L F L star plus covariant derivative of F L star D mu F L plus I psi L sigma bar D psi L minus root 2 G T L phi L star lambda psi L plus phi L lambda bar psi L plus G T L phi L star phi L D. Now we have set up auxiliary fields in theory F L and D. They have no dynamics. They, they will be governed by constraint equations. So we can work, work up the constraint equations. Vary with respect to F L. What do I get? F L star is minus F L star from here is W L minus W L and vary with respect to D what do I get? D is equal to minus eta minus P G L phi L star phi L. L is summed over here, repeat in the sheet. So, very bit. Respect. This gives me a term D, this will give me a plus an eta and this will give me here this object. So, that gives me D equal to that. Potential minus potential is collect all non kinetic energy terms half d square eta d f l square and this that is what is the minus potential. Use this equations constraint equation. Sum is implied here, right? Uh, not written sum everywhere. Well, uh, something is not right. Uh, v. It will be minus of this, so the minus goes away. Wf is f star, so this will give you a, a f f uh, star, uh, f star. This term will give you another star with a minus sign, so that will give minus f l square. And then I have changed sign here, so that is f l square. Similarly, you put the d terms together, this is what you get. Again, as promised, this is supposed to make it theory, the potential function is sum of positive terms, therefore always 
no negative. I think we'll stop there.